say hello and uh, look at me and I think that I'm uh, going to the center and today I'm going to talk about the work in my transport the education tasks. And um, so you may have this technological center that uh, has 11 centers that spread over the area of Catalonia. I am I am set at Mataró in the unit of functional printing and embedded devices. And we are in a binary group that uh, we work in paint for main uh, lines, which is printed to electronics, printed to certain actuators, and um, smart engineering to produce the control of all the printed sensors, and in all electronic communications in the integration of these sensors. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about um, a flexible tag that it's a work uh, integrated between an European project called MADRAS. Uh, standing for advanced materials and processing in organic electronics. And in this project, um, some new materials are developed that um, are compatible with in electronics and are applied to um, active elements as antennas and protectors. To build um, to demos, uh, project which is a flexible tag uh, for the location of impact, to location of assets, and a fingerprint sensor for a motor bike sharing. Uh, so, for those of you that, that are not familiar with IMO electronics, uh, IMO electronics is a, is a methodology that combines printed electronics with a common plastic processing mm -hmm. methods as thermoforming and jet molding that allow larger scale production of plastic parts. And it's composed mainly with, by these four um, steps. One is the, the printing of the of the functional coil, for example, in this case, if it's a game, you are using some capacity sensors, then you, you can or not hybridize a single component, for example, in this, in this case, and then you, you, you thermoform this uh, plastic coil to a 3D piece, and at the end, you encapsulate it with a thermal plastic resin in order to um, give, give, give it some robustness and, and protection. Uh, so the geolocation tag uh, that we are working with within Madras is a tag proposed by Unilock, which is a company um, in France uh, dedicated to indoor location um, solutions. And its solution is a battery-free tag that is based on an ultra high frequency antenna and uh, two antennas and ultra high frequency antenna and ultra wide band. One for transmission and for harvesting of energy from, from um, and the other for transmission of radiation to the located users. And the solution works in an area within a range of costume systems. Okay. Um, so in Madras, what we want to do is to um, go from a rigid solution to a flexible and modern one. So what we proposes uh, to have the antennas printed on, on specific substrates and have a direct hybridization of, of the multiple multi-point control developed by your um, Then the, the, the printed and hybridized part is over molded with um, TPU with thermoplastic that can uh, give flexibility to um, so the, the advantage is that we get flexibility, we actually get an answer with in more electronic we get an answer protection to the circuit elements and to the control unit. And we do it in a methodology that uh, points, to, points towards high volume production of just uh, products. Um, this yes, I say high volume production because all of this is, is done in can be done in, in an equipment that uh, uh, it's uh, fully automatized. And here I show you the facilities that we have at Eureka uh, that, that we do in that consistent on a screen printers, pick up free system that we have. Um, so um, I told you that Madras, uh, for, in Madras project, we are developing um, new materials as well. And for this demo, we, we choose uh, to, to, to produce this demo with uh, innovative conductive ink made of silver nanoparticles because we need as high conductivity as possible and also to make it a little bit tricky. Uh, we print it on, on nanocellulose based substrates. And nanocellulose based substrates are 
meant uh, to, to substitute uh, PDT, they are more sustainable and they have very good values to us. Um, when we were optimizing the drinking of the antennas, what we found that there were several problems, mainly, um, mainly due to compatibility between, uh, for example, the adhesion of, of the single nanoparticles to the nanocellular coil, the first, uh, first version of the nanocellular coil, and also um, the adhesion of the nanocellular coil to the uh, inject molecule. And the solutions we found to Deal with this it was to develop an in with um, in, uh, with, with a mind and with uh, uh, additives to increase adhesion. This in should uh, it's less conducting than 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 the first uh, developed one, but 100 million per square it's enough for uh, the requirements for the human solution. And um, for the nanocellular foil. Uh, what we, in order to make it um, adhere ad ad to the thermal resin, we, we try to go, uh, we, we test several um, ways. Uh, first, uh, we, we test several coatings. Um, and, and first of all, one was PVDC and the other was PU. PVDC was the preferred one because it also gave um, transparency to the nanocellulose, but the PVDC, when it was injected with PPU, detached from the nanocellular. And PU coating was much more consistent. But the problem is PU coating that is not very friendly with high temperatures, and we need high temperatures for centering um, silver nanoparticles in. So we did some um, water optimization and, and some work on adding binders to the PU so they can reduce the temperature. And finally, we get a uh, good. Um, Good uh, printed antennas that could reach um, curing temperatures of 140, and also they could even get better conduction if you use um, like in photonic or IR laser synthesis. Yeah. Uh, the other work that was done uh, parallelly to the optimization of materials was the simulation of the antenna that it was um, done by you and Um the, the final solution is a complex conduit with the integrated medical point control unit, as I told you, but there were some preliminary steps to be taken in Europe. And the first thing was to consider what happened what happened to the ultra high frequency antenna that should um, resonate a very specific <coughs> frequency if we put a layer of chicken in top. I will show you in the next slide results. The second um, consideration that we had is to that the size reduction of the first antenna to fit the children injection mode, which was a 7 plus 7 centimeters injection mode, and also the insertion of a, a PCB with a, with a UFL connector that has a, a 50 ohm impedance in order to characterize these antennas. Uh, at the end, uh, the, the last step of, of, of simulation was the introduction of the complex conjugate with implant optimization. And the positioning of the medical frequency. So, on the simulations, uh, the first simulation is taking into account the PPU layer. What we found is that if we, we compare uh, an antenna without PPU and with two thickness of PPU, 100, uh, 1.25 and 2.5. And what, we, what was observed is that the insertion of PPU shifts down to the uh, resonance frequency. Also, um, it was observed that a thicker and uh, thicker layer of PPU produces a reduction of the efficiency of the antenna. So uh, we um, we conclude that we should uh, work with the lowest thickness as possible of the PPU, and in our system, the lowest thickness allowed was zero one point five. Also, um, we we see that for simulations. We have to, you can see that 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 it that is changing the resonance frequency for each layer of TPU, for each thickness of TPU, and for each directed properties of the material of the nanocellular or TPU, you will have to retro simulate and the retro simulate the antennas. And, and we make a better simulation with what we also did is to measure the extracted dielectric um, constant of the, of the injected pieces by 
printing microstrip type press loops. Okay, so um, we prove that I put, we, we test the uh, we, we, uh, print and inject molecular antennas, and we saw that the simulation variable input that we made with the experimental data was with agreement with simulation that the thicker a TPU layer of that shifted is more than the, the 1.5 the resonance frequency. But in here, what uh, it was tricky is how we could um, characterize an antenna that is in model. It's encapsulated how, how could we reach and the uh, GTM. So we found a solution that it was to make trees on, on make trees on, on the connecting endpoints and we hybridized with our different equipment some parts. So we put axis in antenna from the back, light solving or, or um, attaching it from the female as if the dummy is in that they should be printed. Uh, with the pick and place uh, measurement, we also optimize the uh, hybridization of, of, of um, the final control unit. And you can see here some photos that we have to use a structural analysis and conducting analysis in four points. And this analysis should be um, thermally pure because you cannot apply UV. Uh, on, it's very difficult to apply UV if you have a, a, a that thick, if we add that. Wakey hybridized multiple point control unit because it's a little low to move. Also, on injection molding, we also uh, had to do some tricks. Um, first of all, we uh, validate the injection molding on, 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 on your PCDs. Uh, we know that, 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 that would be okay because they inject it. there is a lot of pressure. In the injection model, when the, the, the thermoplastic resin enters, can detach uh, the elements. That's why the uh, central analysis was used. And first, we uh, successfully injected the PCB. But what happens that the PCB, it's uh, it, with component with, with the dummy one, it's 2.5 millimeters thick, and the MCU, it's almost 3 millimeters thick. So we were using firstly uh, thicker layers, but Simulations say that we need to put uh, in layers over the thin antennas. So for that, what uh, the solution we found is to um, build a model we have. And now we are working with the injection of, of um, the PCBs with, with these cabinets. And I'm also working on on on, on, on transferring it and, 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 and have the thinness and um, thinness of the also, um, now uh, we use the same. I, I, I'm finishing with this one. Uh, we are the, this is the work in progress that's here now. We are using the same strategy to um, characterize the complex conjugate that now we have the design that it's to hybridize the, the connecting path and solve uh, the PCB on the other side. And in this case, we need to use balloon connectors and matching elements because what, what, uh, what's important now is, is to have a, 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 an impedance. Um, There's an um, energy harvesting. Um, so let's see. Uh, my talk, I have shown you the feasibility of integrating a synthetic allocation path to project the plastic path to the insulin model electronics. I should have uh, the advanced materials proposed, which are non cellular silver nanoparticles and tissue consumption are appropriate as subject for the plant manufacturing in terms of compatibility and appropriate antennas performance. That over molding over these uh, antennas should. Be as the, the overwhelming layer should be as thin as possible, which is a 1.25 millimeters deep TPU, in order to have both flexibility, robustness, and positive gain at the, at the resonance frequency. And that the characterization of these deep material properties is required to obtain the accurate simulation that, that doesn't have any significant difference between the maximum of the resonance frequency and the variation of the frequency. So, thank you. 
at this, I want to acknowledge um, the partners of this project and my colleagues at the Decan that participated here. And thank you. And I'll ask you to